These are the distressing scenes at Charleroi Hospital in Belgium at the moment. Similar scenes we saw during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in the spring. Doctors and nurses at this IC unit say they're at saturation point treating patients infected with coronavirus. Seeing the family's reaction because they're not able to come to the hospital. It's really heavy psychologically. It's hard to sleep and I'm not alone having trouble sleeping. There are around 500 new severe cases each day needing inpatient treatment in the country, which has 11.5 million people. It's a really nasty illness. I didn't take it seriously either, and I know now that I will take it very, very seriously. Belgium's experiencing one of the most severe second waves in the world with doctors and nurses already overwhelmed. With pressures and difficult decisions to make, they worry for the future. I'm scared, but we're at saturation point and we need to make choices to choose between patients because we won't be able to save them all. So who are we going to save? The 30-year-old or the 60-year-old? I don't know. To live with that, I don't know. There are more than 270,000 confirmed cases at the moment in the country, and there have been more than 10,000 deaths since the pandemic started. It's a choice for society. Do we continue to accept that people are dying and we can't cure them? Or do we take unpopular measures? But today, I don't see any more choices. The country has reimposed tighter restrictions despite experts calling for a return to a complete lockdown. The Prime Minister says he'd rather rely on the collective behaviour of the public for now. Louise Minor, Euronews. And our political editor, Darren McCaffrey, joins us now from Brussels. Good evening to you, Darren. Things certainly do look very worrisome over in Belgium. So what is the Belgian government doing? Yeah, it's pretty grim here in Belgium, as those pictures quite powerfully have shown, Oliver, and the statistics are quite stark in many ways. Uh, we know that Belgium now has over 10,000 cases consistently every day. That number is growing day by day. In fact, they expect it to reach over 20,000 by the end of next week, doubling every nine days. Now, to put that in perspective, clearly the UK is having around 20,000 cases a day at the moment. France, around 40,000. Both of those countries, though, have six times the population of uh, Belgium. Uh, people believe that at the moment around 1% of the population are infected at any given time. And it is maybe not a surprise then that hospitalizations are going up as well. At the start of this month, on October 2nd, 100 people, Oliver, were being admitted to a hospital somewhere in Belgium because of coronavirus a day. That figure is now above 500 a, a day. It is why hospitals are cancelling uh, non-COVID-related uh, operations, why some hospitals particularly in Wallonia in the south of the country, are turning patients away to other hospitals in that region. And it is also why we are now seeing a pretty dramatic increase in the number of deaths, uh, averaging just below 50 a day now. That is a dramatic increase on the numbers that we'd seen only a month ago. And that is then, again, maybe not a surprise that we're hearing from the experts, from the epidemiologists who are arguing the Belgium needs to lock down again. So far, the government have put in some pretty strict actions in the last week or so, closing bars and restaurants here on Monday, telling people to restrict uh, the number of people that they uh, spend time with socially. And also today, further announcements when it comes to sporting occasions and cultural events, the closing down of amusement parks, for example. But many feel it is not enough and that this country needs to make a decision and a decision soon about whether it closes down like it did back in the spring. Darren, has the fact that up until recently, Belgium only had an interim government hampered the response to the pandemic? 
Critics would clearly say it has, Oliver, to a degree. Uh, you're right in pointing out that up until the start of this month, for what, 600 days, Belgium essentially didn't have a functioning government. That was true during the first wave of the pandemic. Belgium very badly hit first time round as well. It still holds the record of high, having the highest number of deaths per capita of any country in uh, the world. Uh, and many would feel that essentially the country opened up too soon, like other European countries did uh, too, that has allowed this virus to spread in the late summer and as schools came back in uh, the autumn. Uh, though it must be said, you know, this is a difficult balancing act for all uh, governments. And clearly, you know, whether it is in France, Germany, the UK, the Czech Republic, Poland, Spain and to a degree Italy, everyone is struggling to contain this virus uh, right now. And what I think is different from first time round is almost what we heard in that report earlier is that, you know, as the Prime Minister here in Belgium saying, this has to be a collective effort. But unlike first time round, people are not adhering to the rules as much as they were. Fatigue has set in. People are questioning whether they are necessary or not uh, anymore. Some people want life to get back to normal. And that means that irrespective of what Whatever government does, whatever rules they introduce, if more people are going to disobey them, that means the virus is simply going to spread more. And that's a really difficult balancing act because, you know, as we say, it is that balancing act between protecting lives and livelihoods, but also trying to get everyone to act collectively as they did six months ago. That's clearly proving more difficult, whether you're running a government here in Brussels, Paris, London, Berlin, Madrid or Rome. Darren McCaffrey joining us there from the capital of Belgium. Thank you very much indeed.